לעולם חז דוי ודוי ודוי רמונה סובוי. Let's give some tzedaka together with our prayers to Hashem that we should already have the ultimate. The ultimate base amygdos, the ultimate home. While we're also busy now with building the sukkah, the base amygdos is called sukkah. Sukkah is David on the fellas, the sukkah that's falling. And we have to build it. We have to build it with mitzvahs, we have to build it with tzedakah, we have to build it with Jewish unity. Now all these things that I just mentioned, they're also intrinsically related to these days. You know, yesterday I happened to uh, go to one of the local hardware stores. I needed something for the uh, build the sukkah. And there I find half the Jewish community is there. And everybody is an engineer. Everybody is busy. I want this hook, those poor uh, clerks, those poor people helping them in the hardware store, they were going crazy. Because everybody has another idea exactly what kind of hooks to use. And he's designing it with his hands. And these poor people do not know what hit them. But anyway, everybody figures it out. And we're all busy. We're so busy now during these few days with mitzvahs that it actually says that these are the days where the Satan, the angel of negativity, angel of evil, uh, is uh, unemployed. Why? Because who has time to think about the virus? Who has time to think about doing anything inappropriate? Why we're so busy between building the sukkah and the lulav and the asrik? But you know, it's interesting. The word Satan corresponds to 359. Sheen is 300. Tes is 9. Noon is 50. 359. If you think about it, we're six days short of the yearly cycle. A year has 365 days. The Satan has 359. To tell us that indeed there are six days of the year where he is unemployed. Two days connected to Yom Kippur and the four days between Yom Kippur and Sukkot says these are times where the Satan is not busy. Actually, it says Sukkot is Yom Rishon, Rishon, Chesh Ben Avonis. Then God starts again to count and look at our shortcomings. But these are the days that we're so busy. And you know, it's interesting. It says in Shulchan Aruch, perhaps the Maril, great Jewish codifier, that at the end of Yom Kippur, as soon as the fast is over, and we did Kiddush Levana, the blessing on the new moon, and we're getting ready to eat the Yom Tov meal, the post Yom Kippur meal, one should do something related to the sukkah. Either talk about it, plan, do something physically, but a specific involvement with the sukkah. Something has to be done. Why? So the simple explanation is given to connect one mitzvah with the other mitzvah, to connect Yom Kippur with sukkahs. But if we need to connect with mitzvahs, there are plenty of other mitzvahs we can connect to. First of all, eating the meal is a mitzvah. Making Avdalah is a mitzvah. Kiddush Levane is a mitzvah. So there's plenty of other mitzvahs. Why particularly the sukkah? And more than this, it's not about the four kinds. It's not about the lulav and the esrik that we should be busy. Particularly focus on the construction or the planning of the construction, the discussion about it with the family, about the sukkah. What's the connection between Yom Kippur and sukkah? They seem to be so polar opposite. Yom Kippur is a day of serenity, a day of prayer, a day of fasting, a day of seriousness, a day of asking of forgiveness to Hashem, a day of detaching ourselves completely from this world. We're dressed in white. We're like angels. We say, Baruch Hashem Kavod, out loud, and so on and so forth. It's a day which is a whole day in the synagogue. It's a day which is detached from the world. Sukkot is just the opposite. Singing, dancing, eating, saying, L'chaim, I mean, sleeping in the sukkah. It's a whole totally different occupation. But that's exactly the point as the Rebbe says. While Rosh Hashanah and Kippur are days of austerity, days that we detach ourselves from the world, comes Sukkot says, Kindalach, it's done here where it's happening. 
you do need your Yom Kippur. You do need the time to think. You need the time to contemplate. You need the time to be serious. But where does Judaism happen? Down here. When you eat, when you drink, when you sleep, even when you do business. Some people move their offices into the sukkah. Your entire life should be enveloped in the mitzvah. Your entire life should be permeated with godliness. That's what we say, that after Yom Kippur, while you ascend the mountain, so to say, come back down here, and this is where it's happening. And right away after Yom Kippur, do something about it. So, Ebishter, you did Yom Kippur, now you'd build your sukkah, the Beis Amikdash.